Hello everyone, it's your favorite West Virginia out in space here, and to those that know me more personally, I love GURPS. It's one of my favorite RPG systems in the whole world. I love so many of the books, I probably have a crippling addiction to them at this point, but that's irrelevant to today's video. What is relevant to today's video is GURPS Infinite Worlds, which is kind of like the... It's technically kind of like the big crossover setting, but it really isn't. It's more it, the whole premise of it is that you hop around different un universes slash timelines, getting up to shenanigans, and you have like all these different like universes fighting each other and all that jazz. And it's overall a good book. I do highly recommend it, whether regardless of what edition of GURPS you're playing. However, in the book, it gives a whole lot of relatively short, roughly one page, but some get a little bit more, of different worlds. And, like, different timelines, different worlds you could play in, or that kind of thing, saying information, if you will. And there isn't a whole lot of talk about them as a whole group. So I wanted to do that. Is that I wanted to give a very quick summary of each of the major, like, quantum worlds they kind of show off in like the this is where you can set adventures in kind of deal if that makes sense and well there'll be a deep discussion of all of them and all the jazz so i hope you all enjoy so let's get into it some quick bookkeeping before we actually get into it uh there are there are a few different other sets of worlds in this book i'm not covering at all like the hell worlds or the puzzle worlds or the four main worlds the main like multiverse hopping ones which notably i will quickly list here for convenience homeline is kind of like the default good guy slash main character timeline of the setting Centrium, which I think that's how you say it, is kind of like a communist, kind of authoritarian techno timeline that is basically kind of the n main but reasonable baggage of the setting. The Cabal, a whole bunch of multiversal time travel supernatural monsters, and Reich 5, which is, you know, Nazi timeline. The Nazis took over in that one. You get the idea. And also, I will be using an adapted version of the scoring system I used for my End of the World series. Specifically, I will use it for interest, how much I personally find the setting interesting, infinite, which is basically how much the main homeline timeline would find interest in this world, and player, which is short for kind of player impact, how much real impact could your players have in this in that, that world specifically, which I think is sometimes important, but it, it's more variable. Overall, you find the interest to be the most important of the stats, at least to me, but that's just, you know, that's just a personal thing. Anyway, let's start with Amada 2. Basically, this timeline is where the Spanish were able to beat the English, crushing the Protestantism, so Catholicism is the main religion of Western Europe, and in this, a resurgent Spanish empire is, like, the dominant power in the world, along with, like, rivals trying to take it out. Interest is a 2. I've never particularly found the what-if of what if Spain was able to beat England a particularly interesting one, so I just don't really personally care all that much. Um, Infinite is a 2. The home line has some interest in this timeline, but nothing in particular particular and player is a two there's definitely stuff you could impact in the setting as a player but i don't it's not like anything particularly interesting to write home about attila is the next in this timeline the mongols didn't capture Cezal, but instead just burnt them down as a general policy to the point that even by the 2004 the tech is like only like tech level four or high it's like it's really damaged really you had to be on like an island or something like japan like for example that to not get destroyed interest is a two there is a part of me that finds like this post-apocalyptic almost like mongolian wasteland of the old world a bit interesting but i just eh, it's not it's not enough done with it to be personally interesting infinite is a one as far as i can tell homeline has basically no interest in this timeline it doesn't really provide anything of note and player impact is a three actually theoretically you could be impacting by destroying the last bastions of non-mongolian civilization or you could try to fight them back and restart the old ones if that's more your speed Azov 7, an alchemically powered Britain, France, Prussia, and Spain use alchemy and gemstones to summon angels on the battlefield and cast magic in the, in the epic war of like just crazy spacefaring and just a whole lot of stuff right there. Uh, it's actually pretty cool, but all because Isaac Arthur figured out a philosopher's stone. It's, it's a bit crazy. Um, interest is a three. There's some parts that I find, you know, the whole, you know, it's kind of cool, the whole cool, like, alchemical, you know, epic angel battles. This stuff is cool with the whole, like, mixture of the Renaissance theme. But also, I just feel it's not fleshed out enough or made interesting enough for me to personally care about it, if that makes sense. 
Infinite is a fool, actually, because there is actually a few things. One is that they'd love to know how some of the stuff they do, like the magic works. But even more broadly is that this is one of the timelines that's very much that it could break into other times. They could figure out how to traverse the multiverse, if you will, which is always a big deal to all the factions. And player ranking is actually a four because there's a whole lot of stuff that can impact the setting, especially in regards if you accidentally let the secret slip and they figure out a way to go to other universes as well. Bullet part four, the descent of Bonaparte rule a cyberpunk empire. Basically, this is worth Napoleon won because he did something smart for, for the something that different that didn't lead to his defeat. Um, it's kind of an interesting world. You know, he's got the whole cyberpunk thing, so you know, it's a kind of cool concept. If sadly there is no like cyborg Napoleon, but hey, we can't have everything, am I right? Um, interest is a three. Cyberpunk Napoleon, like I said, is kind of cool, but I'm I'm also just kind of left a bit ambivalent. Although it is a bit generic, but I am uh, a bit generic for me to say this, but I am happy that America's here. I like having a happy America in a setting that's reasonably sane. Um, uh, and Japan's kind of cool. Techno Japan, you know, this, it's the stuff that can be heavily interesting in the setting. Um, Infinite is a three. They are definitely interested in some of the tech, but it's not super notable. There is some concern about the coursing I'm trying to take it over, but that's a whole different thing. Player impact is a two. I'm not saying with all the conflicts going on that the players have no ability to impact the setting, but it's definitely not as high as some others. And Britannia 3. This is basically a timeline where, due to several events, the British Empire is much better at managing its overseas colonies, so it has a much greater grasp on the world by the 1984 of this timeline. For example, like George Washington, a Ben Franklin, that's what we're proud British people rather than and end up really calling the American Revolution. It's basically a what if the American Revolution never happened kind of deal. It's kind of interesting. Um, interest is a 3. There is a part of me that does find the whole what if America had never rebelled an interesting thought or how the British could have held on to it. So it's interesting what if, especially like how they actually acknowledge how America would still end up having a lot of influence on the culture of this British empire given its power. Infinite is actually a four, not because the, this town has any cool technology or supernatural powers, but because the course team is trying to use it to subvert it into another one of their proxy timelines, so they're often very interested. And play impact is a three. There's definitely stuff you could do. You could try to make sure the British Empire doesn't fall, or try to keep Corsium from subverting into its thing. Like, once again, it's a, there's not, like, the most intense play, play interaction, but there's definitely stuff that you can do. Next batch of timelines, let's go, starting with Caliph timeline. In this timeline, basically, a, the Industrial Revolution occurs way earlier and in the Islamic world, and so that leads to a hyper-advanced, technologically advanced uh, Islamic civilization across the planet, although they are currently dealing with a massive war between basically massive, like, sec a super-secularist and the religious people and the whole conflict in the setting. But the most notable part is they are super-high-tech. This actually leads into some other things we'll get into, but um, interest is a three- I never particularly interested in the what if Islam became super dominant in the world. I just never particularly care for that. But how advanced technologically this world is, is definitely has some interesting potential, especially within the context of the GURPS Infinium world. Infinite Interest is actually a five for two reasons. One, their tech is very advanced, way more than anything Homeline or Corsium has access to. So they want it, but they have to be careful because the Caliph could definitely develop an ability to travel between universes and neither one of them want them to have another player on the multiverse board so it's a big you know they haul off espionage to get the tech without being noticed player impact is a three it's definitely possible that players could have impact in the battles and such in this setting. and But the major detail usually is trying to keep the secret about the multiverse and get as much of their tech as possible in the process. Campbell is next. In this world, Joseph Cam sorry, in this world, Joseph W. Campbell dies in an auto accident, and so the progress of like the science fiction genre is massively damaged, which leads to a less technologically forward West and even the rest of the world by extent. And they're very much like technology both didn't advance as far as it did by their 2004 as it did in our timeline, but also is that a lot of people have joined more like like almost like Amish hippie communities and the Soviet Union is trying to do its best to try to take advantage of this, but not always very effectively. Interest is a one. I've almost never found the, what if it was the modern world, but less technologically advanced, interesting at all? Like, I just, I, I don't really particularly care about this. Speaking of who doesn't care, Infinite is a one because they really don't care about this timeline. Like, it provides nothing to them. It's not really at risk. It's, well, at risk, like, most, they just think it's gonna blow up soon, so it's like, do a nuclear war, so, like, what's the point? Player impact is a two. It is suggesting the players could try to help build up its technology or get them to be more Techno optimist and try to fight the uh, very likely nuclear war. 
But overall, it's just one of those things where it's like not really much that can be, you know, done with, if you ask me. Centrum Beta is a is next up. This is a basically a what looks to be an Echo timeline, which is effectively an earlier version of one timeline, where it's actually an earlier version of the uh, Centrium timeline. It seems to be. However, it's now their interest in this is I could go into the lore of that Centrum timeline, but I won't. That's for a different time. Um, but basically, what what the main premise of this is that it's a previous version of their main enemy timeline. And broken into his point to help me, if I interest is one, I don't find the path of the century and timeline to be interesting at all like i don't mo i think it's modern version like the one that's the the one you see in the current the current quote unquote in the game is interesting but the past version this one represents i don't find terribly interesting it's basically just what if england and france merged in kind of a boring super state kind of way Infinite is actually very interested to the point of having a four on the scale, purely because they want to know more about the, the enemy timeline they're dealing with, but also because they want to know could this potentially affect the current and main century timeline, which leads into the player impact of either two or five. Now, the default rule mostly in GURPS Infinite Worlds is, that, is that the assumption, if you will, is that if you find a previous version of one timeline, it doesn't actually affect the current one, if I remember correctly, if you mess with it, but there is some wiggle room based on what the GM wants. If you can affect a future version of a world by messing with its echo, then this actually turns you a five because you could potentially completely derail one of the major factions in the world, which could be interesting if you want to do that. Dixie 1. This is basically what the Confederacy 1 timeline. And it's pretty much exactly like you think there's a nuclear stalemate. You know, they're constantly watching over, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's two Americas, you get the idea. It's basically just. It's every other, you know, I mean, like, uh, it's what the South one you've ever seen, which gets an interest one. I have never cared for what if the South one. I don't care. I don't find it interesting. I, I just don't care, so I'm not going to like the setting. Uh, Infinite is actually interested in, th like, to the point of three. Uh, mostly, I'll admit at least a bit that it's mostly the Americans that are interested in it. Mostly that a lot of Americans are considering trying to find ways to support the North in this world to stop the South. Um, but so it has some interest, but not a whole lot. Player Impact is one. There isn't a whole lot to say about this rule. Like, like, this is definitely something you could do, but it's not like framed in a way you could really do much about it. Although I will give credit to these writers of this to actually remember that the South definitely would keep slavery because, like, a lot of people forget that. Um, Eskadal, 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 I can't say that word right for some reason, is the next timeline on our list. Basically, the Aztec Empire, thanks to early contact with the Carthaginians, is able to get over the, the whole the diseases that killed all of them later in our timeline, way sooner, and industrialized. So now, in this world, 1848, the Aztecs are now invading, like, Spain, Portugal, and more broadly, the Western Europe area. And it's, you know, it's basically like, it's basically like the, um, Oh, what was it? The sun, sun. The, it's basically that CK2 DLC um, that had the whole premise. Interest is the three. It's kind of a cool concept. You know, the Aztecs invading the old world as like this industrialized state. There's definitely stuff you can do, and I do find it interesting. Um, interest is a three from the. In, in, sorry, Infinite finds it as a three in it because the whole line does actually want to try to stop these Aztecs a little bit. Yeah, that they hit once again, have to be secret about it, but there's some drama around that, but it's overall kind of interesting. Player impact is a two. There's definitely stuff you could do, maybe trying to take up the Aztecs or stop their raids or whatever, but overall, it's not exactly a super, like, player timeline where you do, you make all these things, and if that makes sense. Frederick uh, is the next timeline on our list. This is basically a timeline where the whole vampire was doing better and then the Nazis from Reich 5 show up and they're like trying to mess with things so they can create like a, you know, a super a breeding ground for Aryan warriors in the past and I don't know, like, I feel like when it comes to the settings in this book, where it's, like, basically they're under the invasion of Reich 5, I feel like that would have been a better, like, sidebar at somewhere else, like, if this timeline gets invaded by Reich 5, rather than having basically two times they completely devoted to that concept, but that's personally just me, so which gets into the interest of a two, where, you know, there's depth, it's always fun in stories, you know, fighting Nazis, it's objectively kind of fun, but the actual, but overall, it's not, I don't think, well put together unless we get a whole lot of personal interest, Interest of Homeline, or the Infinity, is three, just because one of the main rivals is openly invading a timeline, using it as a staging ground to invade other worlds. It's kind of a problem for them. They gotta deal with it. And Play Impact of Three, there's definitely stuff you could do here. Obviously, finding out the Nazis is the main one, obviously. Um, but overall, it's not exactly portraying that it has necessarily the biggest effect in the grand scheme of it, but you never know. Next one is... 
Galatea, Galatea, I can't say that word right. Basically, it's what if North America became super balkanized and Germany, Japan, the Soviet Union started running amok on the planet. And overall, it's basically just what if the America didn't stay in one united nation. And that gets into interest of one. I don't, I don't care really. I never, uh, going up on my list of alternate comments I don't care about goes to the uh, what if America was balkanized timelines, which I don't care about. Um, inter- uh, the homeline infinity is actually two where. They have some interest in it, especially the Americans. Shocking, I know. Um, especially maybe trying to stop the nuclear war that's very likely to happen in this world, but it's mostly seen as a lost cause. But it gets into player impact one, where it's like, there isn't really framed as much you can do here. But I do, but uh, though there's something to say about fight against fate, if you will. At least, you know, if you want to take a more optimistic views on that. Um, Gurren's back is the next one. This is basically a time where Nikola Tesla marries a- Anna Morgan, I can't say that right, and do that as a habit of a much better mental state, and so he invents sci-fi technology, well, more than he already invented, and proceeds to change the world, and ends up being the World Science Council that puts down threats to techno-utopia, the fantastic world of the future. And that gets into other things. Um, interest is five, though I do believe this needed more pages to be truly fleshed out. I love the setting, the premise of it. It's cool. You know what I mean? It's cool. It's advanced golden age sci-fi going around the world. It's like intercontinental diplomacy and all that. Stuff. Like in this Nikola Tesla, it's cool. It's cool. I I love it. It's just my kind of thing. Okay. Infinite interest is a three. They have some interest in purely because a their rivals are trying to mess with it occasionally, and they want to get some of their tech, but not a whole whole lot because they're not better in most ways to them. But they got some cool stuff going on. And play impact is a two. There's definitely stuff you could do about like the between the World Science Council and getting tech out of the air world to other timelines, but it's not really set up as a timeline so much that you have a whole lot of impact on its own without like the GM coming up with stuff. And then we cross over into Jordan's Rome. This is basically where a, uh, a version of Rome that didn't fall and it's uh, set up as a use basically uses a tourist attraction for people in home line to uh talk like to get their experience quote unquote authentic Roman culture and all that jazz interest is uh kind of is the three not I mean, like i get it's kind of cool on one level you know how this is basically just a tourist planet but they don't know it's a tourist planet and there's like some funny stuff in there but it's also basically kind of a joke world in a lot of ways to me personally home line interest is a two now technically they do a lot of trading here aka trading of like tourism and such but it's also kind of mundane and pedestrian to the point they don't have too much like a direct like oh we have to do this right now kind of thing and player impact is one it's simply not a timeline set up in a way where the player is going to be doing a whole lot of like you know investigating or dealing with high level politics it's just not that kind of world has written at least in my opinion and that takes us to the world of lenin one basically this is a world where basically communism has taken over the entire world and america is the last capitalist bastion of power in a world gone full wed tide they stand alone they don't even have like england or mexico it's just them against the world and there's a whole lot of stuff going on there and uh interest is a two admitted there is a part of my American loving brain that absolutely loves this the fact that it's America standing against the red tide, the only force to fight back against the darkness. But it's also not even really presented in a way that they can do much about it. And there's not, it, it, like, admittedly, I kind of wish it was more over the top in somewhat. You know what I mean? There's like power armor and like, you know, I think it's more over the top a little bit. I get even more enjoyment out of it. Infinite is a one. They fully believe this timeline is going to go nuclear and everyone's going to die like the other Lenin timelines tend to do. And so they aren't interested at all. And that also bleeds into player impact where it's not really set up as a setting where you can, as a player, impact it much in the grand scheme of things. Next up in the timeline list is Lucifer 5. In this timeline, a massive asteroid crashed into St. Petersburg, basically kind of their version of the Tudeskin event, but also uncover like these cool, like strange elements that allows you to like build spaceships that go into, across the stars and all that jazz. So uh, Germans, Americans, British, and Japanese all fighting on, uh, going across the stars to find new and explore. It's a very, it's like, almost like post steampunk kind of thing in a way if you will if you will say and uh that goes into interest interest is a four i love the premise of the setting i think it's very cool i love steampunk and that kind of retro sci-fi in that kind of sense although i do feel this this scenario suffers so badly from the lack of page count um i think if it had more time to flesh out its style and feel like if it could get its own book to itself i think it would be 
it would show off much better. Um, Infinite Interest is a four. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here about how their metal and technology works. So, of course, there's always interest to deal with that. Planet Impact is a two. There's definitely national politics you could definitely get involved in. Um, although, admittedly, I think it's one of those things that works better not as an infinite campaign, but as a fleshed out campaign just within its own world. Next up is the timeline of Merlin. Basically, due th thanks to nukes going off slightly differently than it did in our time, magic returned to the modern world, which leaves America as the main superpower dealing with the challenges of dealing with a new millennium and a whole bunch of threats like literally nazi penguins i'm not even kidding so it's a whole lot of like basically modern day mixed with like high level fantasy magic and super science interest is a five let's be honest here it's a cool concept i love this kind of thing there was a reason that it had an entire book dedicated to itself in its own thing like it was its own book and then kind of like that has way more details on it which i'm not using as reference for this scenario i'm just saying that should tell you it has a lot of interesting stuff going on whole line interest is a four not so much because of the magic but because they actually can breach other worlds a little bit though it's not like super on mass or consistent yet so they so home is definitely keeping an eye on them for that play impact is a two there's definitely stuff you can get up to but it's not exactly the kind of like setting at least how it's presented in infinite in an infinite campaign that you're going to be affecting things on a grand scale now i think how you pronounce this next is nigerial but if you're someone you can requote me on that um basically this timeline dark sorcerers the Assyrian priests use dark magic and they help to win wars against other nations and is also causing the polar gates to slowly gates of hell to slowly crack open and do all this kind of thing, and I say, you know, a lot of jazz. And, uh, interest is a two. I like some of the ideas of the concept, but it's just not presented in a way I find personally interesting here. I mean, uh, I imagine it's totally personal taste, though, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Um, whole my interest is a three. They are kind of bizarrely interested in what's going on there but they don't also have a whole lot going on there and play impact is a two definitely stuff you get up to but not really one of those things where you might have a lot of impact given everything going on next one is nostradamus in this timeline nazis from rock five con conquered Man Man the mediterranean of this world and in this world prophecy is also a dangerous weapon discovered by nostradamus and it's a whole thing you know you gotta get the idea it's the altered version of the 1600s interest is the one i don't really care about this i don't care about nostradamus i don't like prophecies especially as a main setting gimmick and once again i fully believe the uh, reich five invading insert timeline should have been a sidebar for every time Timeline, rather than making it two of their jobs however home line does not share my opinion with the interest of four because once again enemy timeline invading this one and because of all the stuff going on here that's very interesting to them play impact is a two once again because there is you can definitely fight back the nazis and do all that but there isn't a whole lot to do outside of well that Ocellum, Ocellum is a four, sorry, the next timeline, and it's basically, what if Atlantis is real, and it's fighting, and it's fighting if, if the Athens as they battle for the, is a, well, it goes up for a war, it's, it has a bunch of mythological stuff, and sometimes some super tech occasionally, maybe, sort of, not really, and basically it's just, what if Atlantis is real, and Plato was right about everything, and overall, it's the whole thing, right? Uh, Interest is a four, I love it, I love Atlantis settings, I, I, I like Atlantis a lot, okay? And, Admittedly, I would give it a 5 because I know the book where this setting came from, Grips Atlantis, but since I'm not using stuff from other books I can't use, like the references they give in other books if they don't also mention here, if that makes sense, is that I can only give it a 4 because it doesn't give the full details to make it a 5 in my opinion. Infinite is 3. They're more so confused about how the Atlantean continent exists than anything else, and Player Impact is a 3 because there's, you know, there's a whole battle going on between the nations and gods and all that jazz and Atlantis is probably prone to slinking, sinking, but, you know, there's definitely stuff you can do. Reich 2 is the next timeline. This is where the, basically the three main factions between the Nazis, the Soviets, and the Allies are stuck in an eternal Cold War up to the 60s about, like, you know, everyone's worried about, and there's a whole lot of espionage and sabotage and that kind of thing because the British basically didn't do a good enough job of fighting the Nazis because they're too sympathetic, if it's a whole thing. But, um... And that leads to interest three, where it's um with interest three because there's definitely some cool stuff going on here. You know the whole Mexican standoff, espionage stuff, but nothing I particularly write home about. Homeline is 
interested in this somewhat definitely, but they also think it's going to end in nuclear fireballs, so they don't tend to be that interested. Play Impact is a three. Once again, there's so many factions going around and high-level espionage and such. You can definitely get your money out of this setting, although it does also feel like one of those timelines that it might be better just to play in as a setting on its own. Rome Eterna is a whole something else, man. It's basically... Uh, to try to summarize it in any way that makes any degree of sense. Well, actually, no, I'm just going to tell you how it is. The Mex like Mexican colony that was a former branch of the Roman Empire sails all the way back to Rome and restores Rome Eterna. This is basically new Rome made by Mexicans. I'm not even going to try to explain that because I don't perfectly understand it. Interest of the two. It's kind of funny. Makes me think it was someone like Hearts of Iron... Or, sorry, sorry, someone's EU4 or Hearts of Iron 4 game. But I also don't particularly care about beyond laughing at the absurdity of it. Homeline is mildly interested in it, purely because absurdism, like what the heck happened here. And Player Impact is one, it's not set up as a setting that you are going to be doing a whole lot of stuff in, particularly. Uh, at least impacting it. Next one is Shaka... Shaka Moon... Oh man, I cannot pronounce that. Oh, sorry guys. Uh, but basically, because in this timeline, the Japanese become Christian, so they adopt Western things for industrialized much faster. This leads to a whole lot of like divergences in the timeline, where basically it becomes a cyberpunk world by 2027 between Japan, Sweden, Brazil, and France. Which, uh, you know, when someone says they're a fan of cyberpunk uh, 2077, just say I'm a fan of Shakemu 2027. Uh, interest is four. It's so it's it's kind of an absurd cyberpunk kind of setting, and there's just something to appreciate with that. I kind of agree. Um, yeah, that's just me at least. But it definitely it's more because I think it's kind of funny, as cool aesthetic than it is maybe necessarily fully fleshed out. Infinite interest is five because. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that they are very close to being able to breach other worlds? So yeah, they're keeping hot tabs on that one. Also, maybe get some of the tech. Um, play Impact is 5. Once again, it's very much suggested the players will be dealing with the fact they are very close to breaching other worlds. Or maybe nuclear Armageddon. No one's quite sure yet, but that makes it interesting. The United States of Lizaria. I did not make that up. Um, it's basically a timeline where everything's pretty much exactly the same. Every famous person, you know, is not exactly... Like, they don't have a William Shakespeare. They have someone who basically did the same thing, you know. It's pretty much all the timeline for all intents and purposes, just without the named people. Oh, except for everyone is a dinosaur because the mass extinction of the dinosaurs didn't happen. This one is just basically j just a... Just a this is a meme setting, which goes into the interest of three. It's a meme setting. It's meant to be funny and silly. Even in universe, they find it funny and silly, which infinite interest is actually a four, both because of how absurdly different it is based on species, but also very, very similar. Also, people, also, homeline operatives seem to be very convinced that they will, that the Lizardian people will be very helpful to them in a fight and they should reveal the secret and ally with them openly. Player Impact is 2, you could potentially, of course, do the revealing, but it's also, once again, more of a joke meme setting rather than like a, you know, meant to be a fully fleshed out thing, if that makes sense, at least my interpretation. And finally, we got Yurf, Yif, Yurf, I can't ever say that right. It's basically Gurp's attempt on, oh gosh, Gurp's fantasy setting, which is is pretty much normal except for the fact that humans in this world came because a bunch of elf sorcerers opened up a portal to summon people from like the dark ages over here and that's and the that whole thing and once again i know and this gets to interest level two i know there's a gurps fantasy book that actually details the world this setting but the writing they give them in gurps infinite world does not make me particularly interested in them and I don't have the, like, I just don't really feel it. It's kind of interesting, but not really. Homeline is super interested in it, purely because of the whole massive teleportation of people from the Dark Ages that happened. So, of course, they interesting how that happened, how it could be dealt with. And Player Impact is one, because it's, once again, not really a setting set up as a way that players will be, you know, dealing with it or doing a whole bunch of things. But anyway, that's, that's all, that's the 25 main, like, alternate worlds you could explore in it now granted the whole world generation whole of the categories i didn't get into but that's basically the video that's a lot of them uh i hope you enjoyed this video and i'd love to know what was your favorite alternate world here listed if you have the book please tell me more or if you've also played gurps infinite worlds please tell or ran it please tell me what alternate worlds you explored in the, both in the book and without it either way i hope you enjoy please like comment subscribe if you like dislike and you know tell me why i'm wrong if you didn't and i will see you all next time do you? Hey, why don't you hit that sub button? You're gonna become a subscriber. Get to see my content quicker. Wouldn't that be nice? I bet so.